Technology permeates our daily lives. It is always important to think about what technology should do instead of what it can do. I'm Richard Ko, and welcome to our Tech 101 with our technology strategies. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tech 101 with our technologists here at Microsoft Singapore. Today, we have Francesco who has joined us and Francesco is a cloud solution architect here in Microsoft. And Francesco, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us a little bit what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I am an uh, app innovation cloud solution architect mm -hmm. and uh, day by day, I'm helping customer to be more innovative uh, while they are doing app development in the app development journey. And uh, the activity that I love the most uh, is to do architecture review on uh, DevOps, uh, cloud native platform as a service and so on. Okay, fantastic. I mean, this is definitely one big area of um, you know challenge for a lot of our customers and partners as they think about uh, really changing and thinking about the way they are developing applications right now. And uh, obviously in the last uh, couple of years, a lot of people have been talking about DevOps, but uh, at the same time, I think uh, security is also becoming a big topic and we hear terms like uh, DevSecOps. So um, would you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it became very important because especially with the pandemic, we, we have seen that the number of vulnerabilities okay. discovered every day, every year is increasing. Uh, as of 2021, uh, there were 20,000 vulnerability discovered. And uh, if there is, uh, for any new vulnerabilities, it takes uh, three days to be exploited by an hacker. So this means that if you don't have the right process in place, mm -hmm. you will be uh, vulnerable. Okay. And uh, so that a hacker will gain access to your code, to your uh, software and, and so on. Okay. Um, when our customers and partners think about this space, uh, what else should they think about in terms of, let's say, the characteristics of uh, how that development process should be like or the culture? I've heard a lot about these kind of uh, aspects in DevSecOps, for example. So the, the most important uh, concept is to shift the left. Mm -hmm. So it's very important not to uh, try to fix the bugs when you are in UIT and production. Mm -hmm or even when it become a breach. Mm -hmm. Because at this stage, the cost uh, to develop a fix is way higher. Mm -hmm. If you start to introduce security at early stage of the development life cycle, like for example, doing development or at the end of development, the cost is way different. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's estimated that at development time, cost to um, remedy to a vulnerability is $80. In production is a eight thousand dollar. Okay, that's a big factor of change. Yeah. <laughs> In addition, also there are way more developer. There that is estimated around forty million in the world okay. compared to the number of security expert. Mm. So definitely, developer should collaborate with security effort uh, so with security expert mm. to in a joint effort to remediate to security issue. Okay. So that means the security professionals needs to shift left and join the developers as well. Yeah, and collaborate together. And uh, together they can uh, bring uh, our organization a DevSecOps journey. Mm. The idea is that many companies have embraced uh, DevOps. Mm. That is uh, the um, union of uh, process people and technology to realize uh, value for the user continuously. and. Uh, DevSecOps uh, as the objective of include the uh, security inside this process. Okay, okay. And in your, let's say, kind of day-to-day -day experience, you know, as a app innovation, um, you know, expert here, and the interactions that you have with your customers, um, what are the challenges that you see um, when when the, they are working with this almost a big cultural change for them? Yeah, there are usually uh, the area where you need to work to embrace DevSecOps in an organization are uh, about uh, securing the development environment. Okay. There are really a lot of vulnerability that happen on the developer PC. Mm -hmm. 
okay. the, uh, the uh, developer might install malware, and this uh, and this computer become a jump post for attacker to the entire infra. Then uh, the the second part is to secure the comp the uh, software development workflow. Okay. This uh, you have to think about the full uh, experience. So when developer are coding, when they commit the code, uh, when they uh, deploy to SIT, and then when code goes to production, also be able to monitor the code to make sure that there is no uh, security breach going on. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, uh, and this is the area where I saw most of the challenge to automate security in, in the, all of these uh, st uh, stages. And then the third point is to make sure that uh, uh, there is the proper culture of collaboration mm -hmm. between uh, security experts and developers. Okay, that's very interesting. I mean, I'm, I really like the fact that uh, now that whole CI CD process um, has that kind of automation that also really captures and encapsulate um, security scans into the process itself so that so um, then from a Microsoft perspective I, I, I think uh, this is certainly a space that uh, we have uh, put in a lot of investments and certainly with our acquisition of GitHub it has been a real boon to us the way we work with developers so Tell us a little bit more about uh, what does uh, Microsoft offers like in this space. Maybe just some highlights. Okay, so one uh, the the offering from uh, Microsoft is uh, divided in two key pillar. Mm -hmm. One is for developers, mm -hmm. and uh, for developers uh, we provide uh, tools like uh, uh, Visual Studio, mm -hmm. where you can have a lot of plugins that help you to improve co code quality, security. Code space will improve your security because you will not uh, install code on your uh, local machine. Okay. Then uh, all the GitHub advanced security, mm. that is the offering that I will show in my demo okay. soon. Okay. And uh, you, you will see how you can perform a dependency security and code scanning okay. just with one product. Okay. And then uh, uh, the second pillar of the Microsoft offering is dedicated for security operation. Mm -hmm. So everything that concern uh, after that you deploy your code uh, in your infrastructure. And uh, there are a lot of uh, very interesting products like uh, uh, Azure Active Directory, Azure Policy, uh, the Key Vault, uh, Security Center, Sentinel. And especially the last two mm -hmm. are very important because they can uh, reactively and also proactively understand uh, what are the issues that are happening in the infrastructure if there is an attack ah. or also provide a recommendation yeah. based on uh, their finding on how to tweak your configuration. Okay, okay. So this is very interesting. I, I like your last point that uh, you know Azure Security Center as well as Azure Sentinel itself has that kind of uh, proactive as well as reactive kind of capabilities that our customers, frankly, should uh, really exploit on. So you brought us a demo. That's really good, uh, really excited. So let's go see the demo, shall we? Yes. OK, yep. let's go. Let's go. This is the DevSecOps architecture that I will show you later in the demo. Uh, in, this, uh, in the demo, I will show you how my code is stored inside the GitHub repo. And now I'm leveraging on advanced security and uh, um, GitHub action to achieve uh, all my validation and uh, security scan. The key element of my architecture are related to all the validation that I perform when there is a new pull request. In fact, in this case, I think it's very important that every time new code uh, is going to be merged in a branch, there should be uh, build, uh, unit test, uh, code quality and security scan validation that is performed to make sure that uh, new code are meeting certain standards. Then uh, if uh, this, all these uh, validation are passed, the next step is to trigger CI CD. And I definitely recommend always to deploy to dev and SAT environment to quickly be able to test uh, your code uh, in a live environment. Uh, CI is, uh, in this case, is uh, uh, made of building a Docker image and then uh, make sure that also your Docker image is not introducing any new uh, vulnerability by performing a container scan. Once the container passes all this validation, upload it to 
a repository that can be GitHub package or Azure container registry. And then uh, listen to any new container and when uh, a new container is available, trigger uh, continuous delivery. And uh, in this case, uh, quickly after that the deployment is successful, uh, run also penetration testing. And this can be done with several open source tools to make sure that uh, only if uh, there is no um, vulnerability exposed via HTTP, you will be able to deploy to the following environment like uh, dev to SAT, SAT to UIT and so on. So let's uh, look uh, at uh, GitHub. So in GitHub, we can see that I have uh, this repository that is called DevSecOps and this is a node project that I have created. It's a very dummy project and I have had a lot of bugs to be able to showcase uh, advanced security. Before going into the detail, let's do one step up and let's look at the organization, Francesco Test. In this case, thanks to advanced security, you will have a security tab. And here you can have a full overview of all your project and all their vulnerability. This functionality is very important if you want to have a holistic view of what is the status of your project from a security point of view. Now, let's assume you are a developer working in the DevSecOps uh, project and uh, if you need to fix uh, your security uh, vulnerability, you will have those three panels. One is about all the dependency vulnerability and uh, you will uh, need to go one by one and thanks to advanced security uh, for each uh, dependency vulnerability, you will have a, a lot of information on the impact, how to fix it, and also possible workaround. In some cases, also creating a ready a pull request to remediate to the issue. A second type of scanning is the secret scanning that is able to detect if uh, any password or connection string has been encoded. The, those two secret scan and dependent bot are easily enabled just with a configuration in the settings and they are running automatically to in all the branches so no need to perform any additional step. Code scanning is performing the, um, secret, uh, the security analysis on the code that you write and for each vulnerability that is able to find it will provide you Again, very, very detailed information about where your vulnerability is uh, and also explaining which vulnerability uh, and how it, um, how it compromises your code and then also providing example on how to fix it and uh, additional reference if you want to understand this, uh, uh, this vulnerability even uh, further. To generate this type of report, you will need to run CodeQL and CodeQL requires a workflow. I would like to show you the workflow of CodeQL just to give you also the ability of understand better how code scanning is working in advanced security. So CodeQL supports a lot of different languages. You can also run, you can scan for different language at the same time. And when uh, this uh, is performed, it will publish all your results in the security tab. But uh, the most important point from a development point of view is that you can configure when you want to run CodeQL. So you can run it every time there is a push, every time there is a pull. But even more interesting, you can schedule it and run it, for example, every Wednesday. This become a very important feature because in this way, if a new vulnerabilities discover and you are not developing your code anymore and so nobody is actively checking for security issue you will get anyway notified because uh, this uh, workflow will uh, run for you last uh, point that i would like to highlight is uh, how is the user experience of the pull request so in this case i, cre I create a pr to fix one of the vulnerability that we have seen and every time there is a, a new PR, the um, GitHub will uh, trigger all of the different checks that uh, I have uh, shown you before. So it will uh, build, uh, run unit test, uh, 
Sonar Cloud and CodeQL with the advantage that each of these will break down in parallel activity and, uh, and with uh, this very interesting UI that will help you to quickly understand what is failing and what is not and also receiving additional information about uh, your uh, code quality issue. So as you can see, this uh, makes your life uh, way easier and, uh, and more efficient the way that you manage a PR. And with, uh, with this, uh, uh, I'm going back to you. All right, folks, what do you think of the demo? This was really cool. I, I, I saw a lot of good stuff with the two sets that we have and it feels it feels very empowering in a sense um, as a developer. I, I saw that uh, on the GitHub dashboard, that was the security tab. And uh, yeah, tell, tell me more about that dashboard. It's really That's uh, amazing. In fact, uh, in my point of view, the ability for security expert or mm -hmm. for the head of security to quickly jump in a GitHub and see all the vulnerability of all the project mm. is something that I have never seen in any other product. Now, the other one, I, I saw I saw the word cron, the cron jobs, and I was like, okay, so how does this take care of things like legacy code and stuff like that? So um, this is uh, something that I also discovered just a couple of months ago, mm. and I found it uh, amazing. Mm. Because uh, in my past experience uh, working for uh, system integrator, one of our key problems was that we were running a lot of security testing, but only at the last stage of UIT. And also, one point that was very uh, weird it was that nobody was uh, running this report anymore. So it, when the code was going live, yeah. majority of the time, uh, there is no process to keep uh, running security okay. um, scan. And also, if there is a new vulnerability that is discovered, Okay. Definitely, it might be vulnerable, and this is what exactly what uh, GitHub is addressing by being able to keep uh, scanning weekly or monthly your code, okay. uh, see if there is a vulnerability, and alert uh, the responsible to take action. Wow, this is really powerful. So you know, folks, if you are still doing your security scans at UAT, I think it's time you stop that and try and do it early early part of your development cycle itself. I think that's that's really good. I'm sure we learned a lot today from Francesco. So what's the, what's the recommendation for our customers and partners that's watching this right now? Okay, so according to the latest uh, research from McKinsey, we have seen that uh, around 60% of uh, um, ent enterprise customer haven't uh, introduced any type of security during the development uh, life cycle. And also, uh, security team and developers are still working in isolation. So it's very, very important that you start to embrace a DevSecOps journey. Why? Because uh, you will gain uh, two key benefits. One is uh, that 80% of the uh, vulnerability with the DevSecOps are spotted in development, so way less effort. And the cost to remediate is uh, 60 times lower compared to other things later in UIT and production. Okay. So definitely, please uh, start to your DevSecOps journey as soon as possible. That is really good advice. So one last question, Francesco, if uh, our customers, partners want to find out more about uh, what you have just shown, uh, where would they go? Yeah, there is this uh, very interesting link that you can use. And definitely, if you want, you can look for me on LinkedIn and uh, just contact me. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, folks, this is this has been a great conversation that we have with Francesco and uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. So uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And meanwhile, you take care.